on UB8 is the voice of choice, showing my face, and we're out here. Battle Bowl number 14, Bolarama, Newcastle, Delaware, and we're having a battle. North versus South, welterweight action. You're going to see more than strikes. You're going to see some spares, and you're going to see everything you got to take to get there. And over here to my left, Tribe, baby, Tribe, Julio, Sicario, Hernandez. What's going on, baby? Representing that Northeast. Another day, we're here, man. We're here. This, this, this is round two for us. Mm -hmm. We bowled each other down in Virginia at Mega Bowl, so I got, I got the better of him there the first time. I, I have to go two and zero. Oh. Rubber match? Nah, no rubber match. We, we, we end the rivalry right here, right now. Two and zero. Oh. Two and through? I'm gonna go two and zero. Oh. That's it. That's the oh, plan. Man. Two oh. and zero. Oh. Mm, okay. I gotta do what I gotta do. All right. Well, let's see what, let's see what the southeaster. What's going on, big bro? Car Carolina Roller right now, rolling high. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kareem, how you doing, brother? Mr. Muhammad, how you doing, brother? How you been? Hey, uh, I've been good. How are you? I am fantastic, man. I'm here. I get to bowl my man again. You know, I'm originally from up north, but you know, uh -huh. <laughs> I done moved down south. I done already took over down there. He got me the first time. It's all right. I'm not, I'm not too much worried about that. Uh, I'm here to have some fun. and not let the people get to me. Hey, and shout out to the bowlers that originated in the north coming down there and, you know, just elevating that welterweight division a little bit. You know, sorry, not sorry. You know, hey, but you know, may, may, maybe I lit a fire under the, underneath that division now. Appreciate you, appreciate you, you know. It's all love, UBA all day. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how we do it. This is what we do, and uh, let's just get it. Hey, hey, ain't nothing to it but to get it, hey. Y'all look battle ball ready. Y'all battle ball ready? Been battle ball ready. Definitely. Uh -huh. Definitely. Uh -huh. Been battle ball ready, baby. Yo, yo, we ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's get it. UBA all day. Happy Saturday to everybody. This is right now going into the Walter Weight Championship. Northeast versus Southeast. North versus South. We are out here. Battle Bowl number 14. Location, Bolarama in Newcastle, Delaware. We have the Northeastern champion. Welterweight greatness himself. Julio Hernandez. Otherwise known as Sicario. If you are an anime buff, you will know that that man is a sniper. And he specializes in sniping out his corner pins. But his opponent. You know, Sol Cario, the guy has, that has been promoted in the UBA Caffeine TV. Mm. Stuff. If you don't have Caffeine TV, by the way, TV, by the way quick plug, go get him. Pick him up. Mm. You know, you you got to start your day with some caffeine. Absolutely. Definitely some caffeine and caffeine TV. I'm Gordon Pepper, by the way. Hello. I'm sort of the floating voice running around, getting updates, stuff like that. If you listened to the Brawl for it all, you heard me. The finals it was a decent finals. However, the semifinals, that was a classic matchup. Outreach getting there by one pin because it came all the way down to Total Wood as a final tiebreaker. Fun stuff here. Now, what's your thoughts on this matchup? You got El Sicario, as you said. Yeah. Julio Hernandez, the welterweight champion in the Northeast, going up against A.K. Muhammad. That's what he likes to call himself. He is welterweight champion in the Southeast. Seeing how they both bowl, they're both pretty good here. What do you expect on the scores, and who do you see winning? Well, you know, I, I represent the North, but in retrospect, they're both from the North. You know, Kareem, he got a lot of, he got, he got, you know, he has Northern. He got a lot, of, he has a lot of Northern, you know, roots. He, he bowled in the North. Came up in the north, New Yorker actually. Shout out to New York, making that that welterweight division so great down there. Not taking anything away from the from the bowlers in the south, but hey, it is what it is. I gotta call it like I see it, and I see it like this. Kareem is coming here representing, and he plans on representing big against someone who we've seen before. They bowled each other in Virginia. Julio got the better of him there, but he's not trying to let him get get a little bounce back. Kareem is trying to make sure he bounces back and he gets the victory for not only his team, but his entire region. He represents the Carolina Rollers, and the method to the madness is haha, a lot of strikes, spares, and keeping the house clean. Clean frames, clean game, and then everybody goes home happy. Well, that is if you're on the winning side. If you're not, it's a long ride home or to your hotel room. Kareem certainly, certainly not afraid of any kind of smoke, being that his name on the back of his jersey is the Iron Lung. 
And I mentioned the method to the madness because he is also known as the M-E-T-H-O-D man. Shout out to the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Julio planning to load his sniper rifle up and take out all pins that wish to stand and stand in his way of getting this victory. And speaking of victories, and speaking of great champions, Mr. Pepper, who do we have here today? We, we have a former welterweight champion, by the way, of Naomi Reese, two-time, two-time welterweight champion by Naomi Reese. And by the way, you've been to a Mega Bowl before, a North versus South match, if I remember I correctly. did. And I had too many crown apple shots, and I just blew it. Was that your kryptonite? That was my kryptonite. Oh, no. I didn't know there were double shots, and I was just pounding them down. And then I lost, but I had a good time. Hey, hey. You gained a good time, lost the title, but gained a good time. Gained the memory. Yes, yes, I did. Well, I would like to fun. point out, one of the people that you won the title from is right now behind you, one Julio Hernandez, El Sicario. I said, Julio, is in this where I took the belt from you? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> no. Memories don't live like people do. So I hope that's a motivation to keep that belt. All right, so as someone that is sort of in the middle, unbiased, halfway between North and South, who wins? Julio, all the way. Julio I got his back. Way. I got his back. Got My fave. Oh. I got him. Okay, so now to have equal time for all parties. We're going to go over here. I see we have the AK Muhammad fan club. Hey. Hello. What is your name, Mademoiselle? I am Adrian Muhammad. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. So, Carolina Roll is all the way. No, this is the revenge match. And you're the missus behind the method. I'm the missus behind the method, absolutely. Uh, he's ready. And behind every great man. Is a great woman. A great woman willing to knock you on the back of your head if you try something, try something silly, right? Absolutely. I'm about that life. <laughs> there you go. And you know what? I know Iron Lung is with all the smoke, and he can handle the smoke, and I'm pretty sure Julio is ready to send said smoke in his direction. Yeah, so I will, I will be representing Southeast in this matchup since you're representing Northeast. Uh, AK Muhammad, I think, wants revenge. This seems to be a revenge, I beat you now, you beat me, sort of motivated battle bowl. Yes, they, um, they, they bowled each other before in Virginia. Yes. Julio did, yes, make a bowl indeed. And he got the better of, of, of Kareem. They try, he's trying to get a little revenge here, rubber match. But Julio says he's not trying to have any kind of rubber situation. He wants it to be two and three. Yeah, he, he, want, he wants this to be over. He wants to win in four. There is a decent amount of money on the line. I don't know exactly the amount. I know it's trip digits. I want to say at least 500, though. So not a bad At least? At least. I'm pretty sure it's at least 500. Well, he wants, he wants to do what he did last time in defending his title against Chino himself from South Jersey Storm, Anthony Morales. That was a sweep. So he's trying to see if he can have a traveling broom. It was a sweep ski. Traveling broom it is. We shall see. I believe practice is close to being over, so I'm going to go check over that. Uh, I'm going to let you handle the mic right now momentarily. I'll be back. Appreciate you, Gordon. Thank you, Mr. Pepper. And shout out also to the producer right now, making sure that all the shots are looking clear and concise. My man, Anthony Nieves. Shout out to you. Holding it down. Cena has stew. I got, I got Mr. Nieves. <laughs> So, welterweight action. So, it's going to be a slight, a slight difference in what you saw in the heavyweight match when it was Dansbury versus Nick Christie. Dansbury and Christie, they were striking up a storm. Both these individuals have the ability to throw those strikes. Popular misconception about most welterweights is that they cannot strike. That is not always the case. They will catch you by surprise, and in a blink of an eye, you can either look at a lot of X's or a lot of slashes. But if they're not hitting anything, then you're also going to see a lot of dashes. And let's see who's going to make a dash to prominence representing their region, not just the team on their jersey. They got a region on their back. Battle Bowl right now. Is now expanded to Texas, and any any, any welterweights looking from the Texas region who are who are interested in what you're seeing and wanna and wanna test out any of these individuals here who's 199 and one and two, hold up in your practice, please. Ladies, one and two. 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 Ladies, one and two
Yo, shout out to Bobby Reese out here. <laughs> what up, baby? Hey, I am the most censored man in UVA. It is what it is. Duffkin Champ. Put it up there and represent, man. Come on, grow a pair. Let's go. You're the only person that walks in with your own personal beeps. Like, how do you do that? I do. You know, because I don't care about anybody else. Yeah, right. right? I mean, if you don't like me, you like me. If you don't like me, it's okay. I still like you. I'll still buy a drink, but you know what? I'm comfortable with who I am. By the way, she makes me very comfortable. But by the way, I'm just going to mention now for Julio Hernandez, this is the August version of A Christmas Carol. We have Naomi Reese as the ghost of Christmas past. We have Adrian as the ghostess of Christmas present. And should Julio decide that he wants to move up in weight class and average class and get better, we have Bobby Reese as the ghost of Christmas future if they happen to meet up in a tag team matchup. So here we go, Christmas, Christmas uh, Carol. I like it. All right, Merry Christmas, check, check. let's go. Let's unwrap hey, uh, that present. They got now the question tonight. is, will they A.K. Mohammed play the role of Scrooge? 500 man doubles, 500 man doubles. If there's any two writers that want to vote tonight, let, him, let me know. This is Dougie, by the way. I ain't supposed to be doing this. So, meanwhile, we're about to start. Attention, we are now taking our check-in in front of the tournament office for the uncap event. Again, one team representative can come down to the table and check in with Gwen a little bit in front of the tournament office. Also, if you have any changes, please let us know at check-in as well so that we can make the correct corrections for it before we start. And with that, we start. So Carol looks like he's going to be starting the match. And Bobby Reese is having his own commentation. And he's loud enough. He probably doesn't need the microphone at this moment. Shut me up. Let's go, son. Actually, I don't want him to shut up. Bobby Reese during this whole thing, that would be very entertaining. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't need this mic. He may be loud enough that his voice picks it up. First ball coming up. That's a strike. I'm not even sure we're going to need the mic for this matchup right now. I think the noise is going to carry right into the microphone. You and I may be better if we just sit right over here. Let's go hang out over here and just sit down at this moment. Because I want to get away. We got Alex Vargas here. Alex Vargas, why, why are you coming away? Come over here, Alex Vargas. So I, I see that you've got a relationship with Mr. Still Carry. You gave him a big old bear hug, and you're not a bear. What's going on here? What? What you <laughs> I'm not a bear. Yes. It's over. Okay, so we're starting over here. Method, a.k.a. AK Muhammad, a.k.a. the Iron Lung. That's the Method Man. You cannot ruin the show. This show right now, with all the Reese's going in as well, is well beyond the point of ruining at this point, and that ball's got to hurry, and it does. I'm just going to hang out over here. We're, we're going to have the fun here. Sakara's here. All, all of a sudden, with all the yelling, now we've got a crowd of people slowly wafting our way over here. It just takes what? Two people to scream, and everybody's like, they're, they're all drafted. They're coming over here like fireflies attracted to one of the lights over here with a lantern. got two people that are bowling that are probably going to throw a lot of space. I'm not sure about a lighter strike, but I'm, I do see a five pin, though. That looks like a five pin. Hey, hey, Bobby, you got anything about a five pin? Bobby! Bobby! Five pin. There you go. So we have a five pin here. And I don't know if the camera's going to be watching, but everybody's raising their hand. And now there is a decent amount of people that are over here. Looking and, and by the way, if you miss one, there will be a powdering ceremony in the parking lot. And that ball, oh, that ball almost struck right out of the building. He made the five pin though. Right now, the method, two marks. What do you want to be called? The method, the iron lung, late for dinner. What would you like to be called? What's your nickname? M E T H O D. Method. In my head, I hear the question. I'm going to go M E T H O D. And he's looking for the KOD on LSIC. Hmm. Something like that. Now, everybody was talking about before about, well, Sean, I may not be doing something where spared from the puns. If I'm doing it, I'm worse. Got to tell you something. I'm worse. And we've got a matching seventh in. 
You did? I'd just like to point out, now Julio said he's missed four of these before. I'd like to point out that Method over here already made one. So right now he's up on your one nothing on the seven pins. I can, I can not only do serious interviews and serious commentary, we can be silly. And this is going to be silly. One thing I love about the Welts Weights, you know, they have fun, they do their thing. You know, you see the, you see the heavyweight guys and they're striking a lot, they got all the sour faces, sour puss. But look at this. You got he made a seven pin. I got a seven pin now. That's great, congratulations. Yes, now, now we're seeing this. We would never be able to get up close and personal in like the heavyweight match. Everybody would be snarling at us for the world title. So there, we're gonna have some fun. I I don't know if you if you saw that uh, that brawls finals last night, nobody was shooting 250. We have some people not make 150. Oops. Sorry, and it was well, don't be sorry. Don't get better, get better. And ah, uh, one, two, five, seven, eight, ten. That is oh ugly. Oh my goodness, five. But that ball was not alive. And you know what? This is welterweight action. You're going to see some spares, so we're either going to see a slash or a dash here. And I told you, you might see some X's, you may see some slashes, or you could see some dashes. But they're going to see we're going to keep the house. You see, we going to keep the house clean. Nope, he is not. Oh, no, didn't didn't get any head on that shot. No head. On no the head. No head on Saturday. So yeah, we saw five. For Method was a five pin. For Sicario was a five count. So no winner there. Sicario with a 42 in the third. Which was probably close to what Mott Ma Nation Militia Scratch Squad did yesterday over at the finals in the Battle Brawl. For Brawl for all. And, and yeah, I went there because I was stuck commentating on that match. Congratulations to Outreach for winning the Brawl yesterday. That's 10K for them. Mets looking for. Oh, ooh, 10 pin. Looking for 10 down. He didn't get 10 down, he got a 10 pin. No, 10 pins, corner. So now, Sicario would love to just leave the 10 pin. He specializes in sniping it out. Let's see if the method man himself has a method to the madness of the 10 pin. Let's see if he's with the smoke. And let's see if he's going to inhale, exhale. Well, he's made seven pins. He can make 10 pins. He can make 10 pins right now. Right now, his house is clean. He's ready for company. Method can make any corner pins right now. And he can make the five. He's, he's made yeah. pin on the left, pin on the right, pin on the middle. Exactly, you know. Right now, he, he his, his jersey's still black. No powder on it. No powder on it. Right now, looking at a potential 16-pin lead as we go into the fourth frame. <laughs> looking like it is going to be a rubber situation. I know he wanted to get it done before. When I say he, I mean Julio. And it looks like now he's going to be fighting for, off of his back and throwing some punches because, oh, wait a minute. Oh, we, we got another five count. <laughs> That's of the Episcopalian variety because that's a Greek church. Oh man. We're, we're talking fives, there's a five. They say if you're scared, go to church. And right now I know he's praying on making a spare. And, and oh, take man. me to church. Julio singing something spiritual right now. <laughs> but Julio's me. going in the background. I knew he was gonna get it back to me. Oh, uh, he's looking to make the spare. Whoa! Well he did one better than Julio did. So let's see, if Silcario can get a mark here, he could take the lead. Of course, if he, well, the hard part you gotta actually hit the head pin, which you did not do on your last frame. Yeah, yeah he, missed, he missed an opportunity of the head pin twice. You know, if you fail twice to get a little head it's pin. It's not very good. It's not good, you're not, no. you're not having a good date. But let's see if he has a date with Destiny with this next ball coming up and, ooh. Face and he's, oh, seven pin went down, out of trouble, he's got a 6'10". He may have to do a foot change. He's saying he cannot slide. And you know what? Harping on that. That, is, that has been the sentiment of a lot of bowlers um, this past Battle Bowl event. Not on the first day, but there was a lot of rain. And on wood approaches, you already know. Rain, heat, does humidity, absolutely. Wood. Rain it affects wood. It affects synthetic. Anything. Humidity is going to affect everything. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it will not affect your spare shooting abilities that way and chopping a 10 pin, which is what Julio did. So right now we got 61.51 in the fourth frame. We're doing a little break here because Julio's going to change some souls. So if you just tuned in, what the heck were you missing? We had 20 minutes of good, fine gold UBA comedy over here. And I'm not even talking about the scores. I'm talking about all these shenanigans and the buffoonery and the tomfoolery that's going on. So right now, during this, we, by the way, this is game one. This is even game one. We may have six more games of this madness. So if everybody tuned in, you missed four frames. That's it, so far. 
Il Sulcario has 51. Meth, the Method Man, AK Muhammad, 61. He's up by 10. Going to the fifth frame, here we go. Julio right now looking to avoid what he did last time. And, well, leaves a six, 10, not bad. However, last time we had the situation, the 10 pin was still there. All right, so what do you think? Well, uh, oh, oh, before anything, I'm gonna definitely say hey back to um, Tom Fort. Hey. Mrs. Muhammad acknowledges you. And she says hey. thanks for watching. Well, th thank you for thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Yeah. We we have people watching this, Salinas, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All we right. Thirty watching, as a matter of fact. We got thirty people here. Maybe it's just. Maybe said, "Hey, Gordon and Sean Knight are here." And, and maybe they came to see and make sure he doesn't chop another square, and he does not. He does not. All right. Maybe they heard Naomi Reese and they said, "We want more Reese's pieces." Hey, you Let's know, get back on track. that would be sweet. That that would be sweet. Mm -hmm. That would be sweet, chocolatey, peanut buttery. But even though that's not Reese's Pieces, but, that's but, Butterfinger. Reese's is in a package, and it's a package deal. So if you get Naomi, you're going to have to take Bobby, unfortunately. Well, Naomi right now. I mean, Naomi, again, former Vixens champion, former tag team champion twice. Vixens champion twice. And she was at Mega Bowl, so she definitely has an interest in this one. Method right now looking to pat his lead. He does. There's a strike coming up. Going into the second half of game one. And I'm going to give you the mic momentarily. All right, this this is definitely game one, and game one we are having fun. Kareem Kareem definitely has the advantage right now on Julio. Julio right now is is searching. He's doing. He literally just did some soul searching, literally and figuratively, and he has changed his souls due to the footing issues that he's having on both lane one and lane two. As I mentioned before. Some inclement weather out here may may have affected the wood just a, just a tad bit on the approach. That ball comes in a little high on lane one, and we got a four pin right there. And coming up high, a lot of over under reads. You got to get ahead of the transitions. No matter what, no matter whether you're bowling for a heavyweight championship, tag team championship, welterweight, any championship, when you're bowling and you're trying to be a part of this this marathon again not a sprint you have to see everything ahead of time every ball you have to watch it you can't just throw it all the time and walk away even though it looks good and feels good you must recognize what could potentially happen in the future and that being a transition the experience that bowlers have been getting here is noticing that the outside is starting to get a very early read, but if you get inside, there's always oil to play with on the inside. I see Julio is sticking with surface. Let's see if that surface will come through in the end. And he, and he swims in a little bit of pool of oil. He had a pool full of oil and he dived in it and he left a little bit of a situation there, a 210. Julio again, still trying to get a little comfortable. And he does not play hero ball there. He just focuses on the wood that's out there. He is down, but he is certainly not out to the Southeastern champion, Mr. M-E-T-H-O-D man, Kareem, AKA Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad, put some respect on that. Southeastern welterweight champion, holding it down. Not scared of the smoke is the Iron Lung representing Carolina Rollers. And that ball rolled up high, super high. Where's Khalifa high? And right now, the tribe, they need to get it up. They need to get it up in terms of they're trying, trying to scalp out these pins. And Julio up. Almost had a little chop, but no chop shop on that one. Makes a spare, cleans up that frame. And Julio's definitely got fans in the background. He's representing the North, and the North is back here rooting them on. What happened? And we have a fallen former cruiserweight champion behind us. I'm sorry, a fallen former welterweight champion behind us. Oh, no, not like this. <laughs> and oh, not like this also with the six count off of the spare. The two, four, five, 
eight. Also known as the bucket. I call it the bucket of chicken. And that release certainly was not crispy. Let's see if he can pick up the order that is left on the lane. And let's see if he can maintain a mostly clean game. And he slides everything over to the right. But never, nevertheless, he picks every single thing up. Right now, Kareem is living the dream, and the dream is potentially sweeping, even though maybe earlier to say, potentially sweeping a very tough opponent. That opponent being the Northeastern welterweight champion. Julio, no matter what, is throwing the ball, having fun. He would like to win. They both would like to win. The, the, the solace in this is even if you if you happen to not win, you do not lose your title. And right now, he did not lose carry as he carries out that seven and that ten, taking out the two side pieces. He took out mac and cheese on one side, mashed potatoes on the other. No sides, he just dined on a straight meal. Julio's got to hurry up. He's got to do something. He's got to respond, and I don't know if that's going to be it, and it's not going to be it, as he almost had a little pregnancy situation, almost let the baby split, and he only leaves the three pin, so he leaves a portion of the pocket that he was looking to hit. Let's see if he can hit that, and let's see if he can go get that. Saturday, August 12th here, Battle Bowl 14 here in Bolarama, Newcastle, Delaware. The castle is where you wear the crown, and the crown is their championships. And they're both showing why they're welterweight champions, grinding it out. Key to being a welterweight champion other than having a 199 and under average, to be a champion in any division, you got to be able to grind out and be able to go out and show out. Every single frame matters. Every single pin matters at all times. And at the drop of a dime, anything will change. Julio going up. Julio tickles the pocket, but not every pin falls and laughs. Speaking of falling and laughing, Naomi Reese is still on the ground, and she is still laughing. There's still a line for payout, so again, just come straight to the table so that you can check in the team. Yes, I believe there is. Yes, there is money up for this. The winner receiving a prize of five hundred. $500 to the winner of this match. So yes, they are playing for something. Not for the titles, but they are playing but they are playing for that for that tangible prize, that money, that green, that cash rules everything around me. You gonna have me use them on this? Did you see that last shot? Southeast champion up. Up on lane two. Going straight up and boom. And if you and if you notice, Southeastern champion keeping this game nice and simple, not going with anything, not going with anything that is that is super aggressive, going up the back of the ball. Oh, get him, get him, get him. Up, oh, Kareem. Hold on a second. Wrong lane, brother. And that is it. And, and, and that is right. Indeed in the zone. He already knows he's locked in. <laughs> he's got he's locked in. He was ready to hit some innocent bystanders. Those bull, that, that shot was not even gonna be meant for lane two, but it was gonna get it too. It is safe to say that he definitely has game one in his hand. Well in hand, stranglehold on game one. Looked very comfortable. Julio dealing with some footing issues. Definitely had to change his souls, and hopefully he did enough soul searching to find find, find a comeback in game two. Defiant ten pin stands up for its rights. Good thing nothing stood up for its left, or it would have been a seven ten. Either way, enough pins ahead. Makes us, I, I'm confident the spare will be made.
No problem on that 10 pin. Potential 186 maximum for the meth. And right now, Iron Lung says, this is if this was smoke is, then shoot. I've had a lot more smoke in burning buildings because this ain't nothing. Came up a little high on there. May have been a little, a little area check, but 184 maximum. Oh, well, sorry, not 180 more. One, <laughs> excuse me, 184 finish. Game one for for Muhammad. Julio just needs to get lined up and get ready for game two, and needs to get everything ready. Get his foot right. Get his ball choice right. And we got and we got some noise in the back. And let's see if he can strike out and work hard for this 166. Julio right now trying to find not only a line, but also trying to find the right surface. Trying to find something, just some kind of, some kind of elements and some kind of components to the recipe. He needs to get all his seasons right if he's gonna cook up a victory here. And you can see that ball just, it's laboring. It's not really getting there the way he wants to. He, he may want to take an interest in potentially getting something a little stronger if he's going to play where he's playing. He's got to find it because Southeastern Welterweight Champion has definitely found it. He's got a rhythm. He's dancing, and then the music is sounding really, really good. And I'm pretty sure a 4-0 sweep will be music to the Southeast, to the southeast ears. Music to their ears, indeed, it would be. Yo. Hey, Julio. How you feeling, man? Uh, you, you did a little, you did a little soul searching. How you feeling? I'm feeling uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie to you. A little warm out here. The approaches are real sticky. I had to switch to uh, one of those S10s. I'm trying to see if I can get some momentum going, but the lanes are a little tricky. Uh, got me game one, but I, you know, I just gotta figure out where it is. You know, the, the round one, the feeling out process, like in boxing and so. stuff. Sometimes you throw jabs, sometimes you go around the ring just to get a feel of what the ropes are like. I, I say this, but I, I think that's the first game he got against me. Oh, really? it, out of five. I think I beat him. I think I swept him over there. So hmm. I know he's coming back at me with a vengeance. So. Well, he look, he's already looking comfortable. Like I said, yeah, no. he came in here with a method. He's an iron lug. He said whatever smoke you're trying to bring, he don't mind. So um, while you're trying to hear, get comfortable, get past the footing issues, and get past the potential surface changes, um, are you ready? Yeah, I, I mean, despite all of that, at this at this point, they're excuses. You know, we're both champs, so I gotta come in here. I gotta come in here, be a champ, be the champ that I am, and I'm gonna have to just throw it better, <laughs> right? Throw it better. Hey, hey, right? hey! When in doubt, throw it better. Throw it better. Just press, All right. press enter. And we are getting ready to go into game two. Thank you for your time. You know, I see you, I see you getting your mind right and getting your feet right. Uh, I ain't going to lose confidence. You know, hey, we don't do that in the welterweight division. Again, thank all of you guys who are, who are tuning into this welterweight action. <laughs> Shout out to all 23 people watching. Yes, Kareem is up 1-0. Yes, 1-0. First game one, 184 to 156. Shout out to all the teams that were, that were participating in all events here. The Elite Eight was crazy for those who, who did not see um, City Morgue, unfortunately fell to Outrage. Outrage also were the winners of the Brawl for it all. Murder Inc. with a with, with a with a 501 pin victory over their opponents. They, yes, there was no anarchy there. Um, complete, the anarchy could not complete the mission. They put a pair of 501 jeans on, some Levi's on their opponents, and sent them packing. Exit moves on. Outrage moves on. G-Town moves on.
The, the team that you heard me say move on, they are on to the next rounds. So Exit and Murder are in. G-Town and Outrage are still in. And speaking of in, we are still here and we are into game number two of the Northeast versus the Southeast welterweight champion. $500 up for grabs, North versus South action. Anytime Battle Bowl happens, it's always a question. Who is it going to be? North or the South? And right now, the Southeast champion up game one on the current Northeast champion and the Northeast champion taking a trip outside to see what it's like. And the cold wind blows because that wind, uh, so that wind definitely blew that ball all the way to the left. And it leaves a fast eight. Four, seven pin lead. You know, yeah. Uh, Naomi, how you feeling, baby? Feeling good? I feel very good right now. I see, I see, I see. I see he, he did so he did so bad the first game that you, you fell out. You almost passed out. Oh, no. Well, he got it this game. I have I have faith in him. He got this. That's my dude. There you go. And, and her dude, indeed, makes her, makes her spare no problem. Julio definitely trying to get a little comfortable. He still, and he admitted, you know, he didn't shy away from it. He's feeling, he's feeling slightly uncomfortable, but slight discomfort is only for the moment. And he's got to jump into it because he has to lose himself in the moment now before he loses this match. And he may have seen something after that first one. Adjust up that first shot, and the crowd goes wild for Sicario. It's the welterweights, baby. See, that's that's what you gotta understand. I got high expectations. Shout out to everybody checking out some welterweight action. The action, limitless. You never know exactly what you're gonna see. You could see anything at any moment, and you could see all ten go down, or you could see you could see the seven, the seven take away a heavenly X that would have been up there. Now, now, now the, now the, now the Southeast welterweight champion definitely, for the most part, has been clean, been, been exemplifying great spare shooting and keeping that going. And he's walking it out, and a slight bit of doubt. I'm say congratulations, you're the, uh, bigger, cooler than I am at this point. So, the, despite the, uh, you had one, what the heck was that shot over in game one? And despite that, as you said, he's been good, and that's why he's up one zip. Sorry about that. As, as most of you guys know, I'm not just behind the commentary. I need to deal with a lot of moving parts, and there were some moving parts that I had to deal with. I'll probably have to deal with more during the process of this match. Right now, Meth with a strike, looking to take a lead here in game two. He's already got game one. That ball's a little bit tight, and eek. That's uh, three, six, nine, ten. Maybe he doesn't want me doing commentary anymore. Oh, no. Oh, Gordon Pepper with a dark cloud. Gordon's back. See, I don't know. He's wearing headphones. It could be our podcast that he's listening to right now on his headphones because those headphones do carry podcasts. And like that, he could be listening to us. He could be. That'd be fun. And if he was, I'd be saying, make sure that you leave enough room to make that spare because your ball's been a little bit squirrely. And he I made the spare. Maybe he did listen to me. That was a nice shot. That was a very nice shot, and that's not an easy spear to pick up. Anytime you have a, a spear that involves a, a pins grouped up and there are pins in the back, sometimes you get, you get a little deflection. And, and he did not deflect. He went all the way through. He picked up that spear. He converted it, and he's keeping the house clean. Julio's fighting over here to get a little comfortable, and he goes up the back of the ball, and he takes them all out. All right now, it looks like... Now, let me explain what's going on here. I'm not sure if you mention this or not we have a cadre of people from apocalypse that are behind lanes three and four that's where the noise is coming from and and they want julio to join apocalypse and they're holding a, what is this right now hold on one second let me have this so what i want to ask is this, is he auditioning for apocalypse right now is this what we have over here is this an audition Unofficially, yes. Unofficially, it's an audition, and that's a fail, 3 6 Now, I like to keep in mind, last season, 
Apocalypse made the playoffs. I believe you qualified in the third position. Uh, Tribe did not qualify for the playoffs. So now you're maybe looking to add another piece to continue your playoff run for next season. Would that be accurate? Uh, I wouldn't say that. We're working on things at the current moment with with uh, with like with different lineups. How we're gonna how we're gonna go into the next season. Talk about li lineups going into each game, each match, team chemistry. Uh, by the way, congratulations for making the playoffs this season. What? Thank you. I would say congratulations for making the playoffs, Julio, but I can't. Oh. Yep. Yeah, that sounds about good right there. Okay. But he's here. He's here. But, but he is here. That that does some season for Tribe. Tribe, Tribe, very good, very dominant at the beginning, and then the wheels just fell off at the end. That happens. We've all been there. And we've all been throwing a really nice shot and leaving a 10-pin right now. That's what's going on with Method. Julio, very happy about that. Julio, keys right now winning game two because you don't want to fall down two zip here. Throw it better. That's, that's what I told Sean that earlier. Just, you know, I know there's all these things going on with the conditions. It's just, you know, you got to kind of suck it up. We're both champions. You know, I've been the dominant champion this year. Just got to throw it better. Got to deal with all, all the adversity and footwork and whatever. Just got to throw it better. That's number one. Throw better, throw strikes, make my spares, and... One of the things that I've been impressed with, with the exception to the chop, from you, you've made all the makeable spares, yeah. all the makeable ones. I mean, obviously, there's some that you weren't going to make, like no. the five. Well, that's why you said makeable. That's, right. that's why I said makeable. But no, you guys have been very good. Well, Trades, this is an impressive matchup. I mean, it's always that. It's, it's, you know, it's but you can you expect can that with champions, though, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, we've just been able to make more spares and be cleaner against our opponents. I think that's more. Don't leave the nasty splits. Don't leave the Greek churches. You know, and we can string a strike here or two. And All right. I wish you good luck here. That was a quick little sound I thought by Silgario. I would chat with Method, but he's currently he's got his ears listening to you. I don't know what he's listening to. Again, I'm hoping that he's listening to us. What's going on, brother? Yo, Meth. How you feeling out there? I see you keeping the house clean. I see you searching, trying to maybe you know keep the same speed, same rhythm. Well, um, what, are you, what are you feeling like out there? I'm feeling a little lost out there. I can't keep it straight, so I got to move left, but it's not coming around the corner, so I got to slow it down. You mentioned moving left. That's been a lot of um, a lot of people's uh, struggle, especially even both heavyweight champions. They had to get ahead of those transitions, and I see you see it yourself. Keep making those moves and keep you know moving to what you're doing. All right, my brother, appreciate it. All right, indeed. And it seems that right now we got we got a man in the building coming to check this out. And oh, wait a minute, we got a pregnancy situation. Positive test. Well, right now the lanes because there's a baby on the lanes that somebody got to make. <laughs> so, by the way, we are here with front nine poppy, Mr. Jalen Floyd. How you doing today? What's going on? Uh, sir, first of all, congratulations on Total Man making the playoffs this year. That's the first time for you guys. Yeah, we did what we had to do in the last match. We're, we're in like fourth or fifth place, and we took what we took, and we jumped. Oh, shit, he made the baby. He made the baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, we um, took what we took to jump up to third to finish and qualify for the playoffs, so we grinded. Absolutely. Congratulations on this. Now, I see that you guys have an affinity towards uh, Mr. Julio Hernandez, a.k.a. El Sicario. So, uh, any chances, because Apocalypse is trying to draft him on uh, their team. If he was available, are you going to try to draft him on your team? Because the opt-out period is still on until the end of August. So, honestly, we picked up uh, a good amount of bowlers. Um, I think Legacy... Are, they're not coming back, so we picked up a good amount of bowlers. And if he wants to join Total Mayhem, he's open to doing to doing that. So he has options. Oh, oh, flat ten. Uh, that's flat. He's got a ten pin up there. So right now, Julio. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to help you canvas right now. So you already have an audition process for Apocalypse. I've always, I've uh, been talking to Front Nine Poppy here, JJ Floyd, and. He said that there may be some room for you over here, Total Mayhem. Would that be correct, sir? 100%. You know, Naomi would love to have you as an extra piece for Reese's Pieces over at Kryptonite. Now, let me ask you. But I like to travel. They know that. They do know you do like to travel. So did he miss that? No, he didn't. He made the spare. So right right now, I still clean Sicario up by 13 as we go into the seventh favorite game two. Method is up one nothing, so it's now getting to be nitty gritty at this point. Now let me ask you something. You're part of Team Beloved. 
Now, would you want Julio to join Team Beloved? Do you think there's a spot for somebody like Julio Hernandez on your team? Man, who wouldn't want Julio, man? Who, who, who wouldn't want Julio on their team? Man? If, if that ever happened, then you know what? I'll be tap dancing all day. And you know who didn't tap? Southeast Cruiserweight Champion didn't tap, and he's sending a message right back to you. Uh-huh. So I'm not, I, he, I'm pretty sure what he's saying is not translating to Mike. So he said last time that he played Method, Method didn't have it. Today he does. Mm -hmm. Right now, Method is trying to sneak himself right back into this. He's only down by 13. He certainly has a chance. He's got a strike over here. It's also forcing El Sicario to throw a couple more X's on the board. Seventh frame up here, Sicario. Can he respond? Yes, he can. Strike for him. Hey, as long as he keeps striking and keeps closing frames, the odds will still ever always stay in his favor for this game. And he's got to make sure he wins this game because it's better to be 1-1 than be 0-2. Yeah, this is a huge sight right here in the eighth frame because, as we all know, in terms of bowling, if he does not strike here, it's 20. The most that he can have is 20 there and 20 in the eighth. If Meth can go strike, strike eighth, ninth, that's the 20 pins that he needs to take the lead back. Big shot over here. He needs another strike. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Ah, oh, 10 pin goes up. We almost had a very long delayed package from Federal Express. Oh my goodness. 10 pin said not accepting deliveries on Saturdays. Oh man, wide legs open on a Saturday. That would have been a, a, a after hours situation right there on the lanes if, if that would have stayed up. So it was a potential 247 max for Julio. Let's see if uh, he got that sniper rifle that we know him for. And if they go load it up and there you go, spinning the block, getting the blick for all the all the young all the young viewers out here. Well, the good news is the ten pin went down. The bad news is he cannot lock out Method now. He was up by 13. If Method doubles, he'll be up by three. If Method throws one in the ninth, he'll be down by seven. So big two shots here, and in this late in the match, there's not enough time or or opportunities, I should say, to regroup. So El Sicario here, I think he may be pointing out that sniper rifle at this point. Big shot in the eighth frame, method that ball checking up, and no. Does not get the double, 13 pin lead stays intact. Method not happy about that. You can tell him the look on his face, left the seven pin. Now again, as you have said, it's been pretty clean. Is it time for someone to make that first unforced error of the match? That is the question. He doesn't think the answer is yes, and the answer is not. Well, you don't want it to be you now. Okay. So Kara says, it ain't going to be me. So ninth frame coming up. So Kara's still up by 13. Both bullers on spares. No, it's all about that window. The window of error, it can't exist. <laughs> it, it should not exist. But does it exist? It always exists. And there's not a lot of room in there. There's only a little smidge of the air. Yeah, for, for him, that's next shot. If Meth wants to put any pressure on Silcaro, this next shot's got to be a strike. A spare is not good enough, and I will explain momentarily why that's the case. This needs to be a strike, and oh boy is right. That is a three-pin, it is not. This is why it needed to be a strike. So Carrier right now is up by 13. A mark of the ninth and a mark of the tenth with good, with good wood could put him in such a place that even if he struck out with the spare, he would not be able to lock Silcaro out. That's why he needed a strike. Strike gives him a chance to, to lock him out in the 10th frame. Or force Silk Carry to throw a double, and there is our first unforced error of the game, and it could not come Attention at a worse time for Method and a better time for Sicario. And, and yes, this is why I'm called the Dark Cloud. We well, do have mainly all the my behavior, sir. Checkers. Well, they say the tongue is the sword, and right now, yours is an Excalibur because it just sliced through any hopes of the Southeastern champion submitted. taking Please game two and being up 2-0. And it looks like we're at 1-1, one and, one, and it looks like also the Northeast is going to have a little fun. He'll have a fun. He'll have, he might have some fun with that. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. He still needs two marks. He still needs a mark in the ninth and a mark in the tenth. And he did make mention that he was struggling with the seven pins over the course of, of, of Battle Bowl. He did. He said he missed four. I'm sorry. I take that back. He needs a mark in either the ninth or the tenth. Good count in the tenth can lock him out. Best that method can do, 192. So Cario, if he goes Dutch, 206. So he's got some error here. That being said, he threw the ball all the way out, and it makes it. 
Now, let, let's do some quick math here. He's got a 176. So he needs my count. Eight and eight would be not enough. He needs a nine. So I, if, I, if I'm doing my math, yeah, yeah, eight and eight is not good. Eight zero is a tie. So he needs a nine. Anything less than that, he needs to make the spare. So as long as he has nine, he'll be fine. Nine or an eight one. Eight, eight, eight zero by itself is a tie. Anything, if it's first count seven or less, he needs to make the spare. Anything else would be uncivilized. Would be uncivilized. The ball looks good to me. That's good enough. That's fine. That's good enough. That's a 10. That, that is good enough because right now, I believe, even if he misses this, he's got a 194, and that's good enough. So Kerry agrees with me on the math, and we're tied. One game apiece. Yes, yes. One and one. Yes, a method's doing the thumbs up. I think, are you listening to us? No, maybe not. He's just ignoring us. I get that a lot. Snipes a 10 pin, that goes down. That's good. Right now, we, we, we still have the club that's over here. So I have a feeling that they may be on lanes three and four for the next matchup, which is fine. The more the merrier. Shout out to both opponents. Uh, both competitors, rather, making this match extremely entertaining, not only for themselves, but for everybody watching at home. You can be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. You're watching us live. And if you're not watching us live and you're going back just to watch this on your lunch break, shoot. Oh, speaking of break, no good break there, but bad break at a great time. Still gets the victory. That's a shot that Method wanted on one frame earlier. Yeah, on the first one, that's what he wanted. So and then telling him, first shot's a little slow. Well, durr, he's playing area shot right there. Of course, it's going to be a little slow. Sean Knight, we've seen two games. What's your thoughts right now on both bowlers? Well, one started out comfortable, other started out uncomfortable, and we saw a slight shift in that. Well, a major shift. Um, and there's, there's a lot of keys in that. You cannot just rest on the fact that you felt good game one. You have to... Speaking from a championship perspective, you have to see and be ahead of every transition with each shot you throw. Every shot, no matter how good you like it, you still have to look at it to see what potentially may happen. It is chess, not checkers. Every move sets up the next three moves. Or if you were with me in the casino, it's not checkers, it's Pygao tiles. Playing tiles, it's Pygao. Oh, you gotta play, but you know what? Going to a casino, if you're playing blackjack, you gotta play your cards right. Absolutely. In this case, Julio played them right, and everything for him came up by aces. At the end of game two, Silcario 203, method 182. We're tied, one game apiece. This will be fun. You know, it's the first game, there's a lot of frivolity, there's a little ha ha ha. Now it's starting to get a little serious. It's still nice will towards a nice camaraderie, but it's, it's still a little bit of pressure coming through. Well, you know, it's like if you came up in the hood with slap boxing. Slap boxing always starts out funny games, and then, you know, then the slaps get a little harder. You know, the face expressions change a little bit, and now we got a real fight. And we get, we got a situation. The, yeah, it's a little bit of slapping from both people, but no, nothing really major. Oh, yeah. Slapping, but no fighting. When the slapping turns to clubbing, this is when, you know, people could get knocked out. So right now we're still in the tickling phase of slap boxing, and ooh, that ball looked good. That was a lot more than a tickle. He, he, no, he drove through that. Yeah, that, that was a slap. And we might get a slap. Well, speaking of slapping, we're waiting to see uh, some signature slap outs from Julio. Julio, one of the best slap outs in the whole game that you'll ever see in any division by any champion. Very true, very true. So, methods up. He's already seen what's on the board. He's got a strike coming up. He's got a shot to double. But you've got to see the first frame first. And I say double because he's got the next two frames. Again, in a UBA matchup, it's one, two, 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 two. So I know that we really didn't mention this. We also really didn't mention this is a best out of seven. Whoever gets the four games wins, wins the North versus South. And as I said, at least 500 bucks. I believe it is 500. Yes. Which, which is good enough for the hotel room. We got some gas money. And then you're just playing for freezies at this point. Don't forget the bar. And, oh, you definitely have enough at the bar. Of course, if you do a little uh, boarding action, that's much less than 500 bucks. Right now, he's looking to make the spare here. That ball looks good. It is. So, we both got marks in the first frame. Sicario has a little bit of an edge because his mark is in the form of a strike. Frame two coming up. 
But again, both bowlers still very clean. An unforced error, which if you really look at it from Meth, really didn't, it may have solidified the win, but it really didn't affect the win or the loss. And one thing I definitely noticed that he looked a lot more comfortable in a shot, despite the four pin leave. He seemed like he liked it. He seems like he's getting a little comfortable, at least on lane number two. Lane number one, still trying to figure it out. It's always harder to bowl against the wall. You get sometimes a little different reaction on each lane. Everything's different from lane to lane, not just from pair to pair. Well, if you notice, and I'm a lefty. If you're a righty, it's not that big of a deal. However, you're a lefty, which means you just got to still play against the wall. And the other thing about, oh, he just made the spare. If you notice the vicinity of how far away the wall is, usually there's a spot that's big enough for a human to walk back and forth. It does not look like you have a lot of space there. If there is enough space for a human, it's not a huge amount. So even from a visual, even if it doesn't really affect you, from a peripheral standpoint, it could play around with your mind a little bit in terms of how close everything is. Indeed, you know, sometimes when, whenever you get wide open and when you get real focused, your, your sight opens up, you start to see everything. You start to see a fly on the wall. You can see a little bit of piece of dust on the ground. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call. I see a 180 over there. I'm going to call that in. I'll let you hold on to the mic there, sir. I'll be right back. All right, all right. Well, as we take this time to handle this slight mechanical issue, I want to thank everybody who is out here in Battle Bowl. And if you're watching at home, thank you for being here with us from the comforts of your home, or even if you're just on your phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, we got, we got, we got, we got Rudy. What's, What's going up, on? How y'all doing? Uh, everything good? How's everything, Mr. Voice? Well, I want to say thank you for still calling me a good bowler. Oh, you no, know. you're a good bowler. No, no. Nah, nah. How can I not say that? You're a cruiserweight champion. Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, funny fun fact is, and you're most, you know, you had every, I have four or five times the belt. You know, I felt like I had it like four or five times. Yeah, four or five times, and you defended the belt the most between you and um, Raul. Yeah, yeah, so shout out to me, Raul. For me to not call you a good bowler, th that's kind of difficult, you know. I respect that. You, you know, know? Thank you so much. no, no problem, no problem, no problem. We got the we got the welterweights here, which is pretty good. Yeah, welterweights we, got action. Action, got, got action. I really like this. You know, you got my boy Sicario. Um, from Tribe, my team, all day. Tribe, baby, Tribe. Tribe, baby, Tribe. Um, actually, you know, the funny fun fact is nobody's giving him credit for being the winner for the longest run of having the, the belt. And you know what? I always make mention that. Julio right now is, is probably, I, I put him in top three cruiserweights overall, not even just in the North. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, can, I keep, you know, I keep speaking into the future. I mean, I'm having these premonitions. Well, I, I think that's the next step for him. I think he showed that nobody's beating him in well to wait. Why not leave undefeated and go to Cruiserweight and start making your name there? And I mean, it's just going to show growth and show everything that you need. And uh, Ronnie, another funny fact is that that guy's not really South. Oh, he's, yeah, yeah. he's not really South. Harlem. Harlem. You know, he's basically. Harlem Brown. Yes, sir. You can catch him up at home field when he was there. He just made a move and quickly, quickly claimed his belt. So being that he quickly claimed his belt shows how the South really does not have adequate bowlers compared to the North. Well, I mean, I mean, you could even look at who he beat for the belt. Shout out to my former teammate on Suicide Squad, yeah. Will Wanted. Yeah, Will, Will. Yeah. Well, oh, where's, ooh, Julio's coming up high. I think he needs to make an adjustment to the left and start playing these lanes. I think the burn is already getting there. I mean, that, that, that ball was smoking on a good strand because it was super hot there. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like it had some purple hairs in it. It had some purple hairs. It looked like it was in the Snoop Dogg contest. <laughs> oh, man. No, the funny fun fact is, you know, the UBA is killing it. Oh, did you mention Texas? You know what? We did make mention of Texas, and everything becomes bigger in Texas. And we're trying to go down there, grab the bull by the horn, so yeah, to speak. Definitely. I think when the UBA hits Texas, they're really going to love us, and they're going to hate us at the same time. Exactly. Because they're going to love the fact that we're there, but we're going to be there taking their money. Yeah. I see, you know, hey, we leave it out there, we're doing it. Bar barbecue and bowling. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. You just touched my fat boy's stomach. Oh, all, Thank you. <laughs> we all a little fat at heart. And hopefully we get a fat pocket if he strikes. But no, but unfortunately, inflated with a 10 pin. Exactly, exactly. Even barbecue in Texas. I'm, wait, I'm so excited about this Texas, this Texas acquisition. Um, I can't wait. There was mention of Ohio eventually. Um, the UBA is going to be statewide. It's going to be beautiful, bro. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder what's going to happen with the belts. I mean, it's going to start going into divisions. I would like to start seeing brackets 
between the champions on different divisions like Ohio, Texas, Florida, wherever we start going out. I'm even going to say Alaska, you know. Well, we had Alaska. Yeah. You know, we did. Alaska was one time a part of us. We birthed them. They started their own their own little thing out there, very much like UBA, um, you know. Uh, we will not talk about that that much, but mm -hmm. you know it happens. Um, we actually are worldwide, but right now we're just making little moves here and there. Where we're making it more official. Whereas you be a wow, lane one is moving like I thought it was fast and furious the way it took that turn. <laughs> <laughs> a major drift, and you mentioned making moves yeah. in terms of embracing the culture. So, what do you think? What kind of move do you think the Southeast champion has to make, especially on lane one? He he's had that same kind of reaction a couple of times. Uh, he definitely needs to take a step left. He needs to stop hitting the outside and letting it ride in. You see how he just did that? Uh, he made his ten pin right now. I think he needs to step there and play, put that ball either between the 15 board or the 10 board, which is the second arrow, third arrow, and see how it rides in. Uh, that, that'll be my adjustment. I, I hope, you know, hey, if his teammates are hearing me, I hope they do it because this is not full UBA right now. I don't know where's the crowd, but, you know, to see this, the adjustment and the pressure, I, I, I think my, my man is going to capitalize on it. He already made the adjustment. Look, he straightened it out a little bit more. He came in. And service is big, too. Yeah. And I've noticed that what, what a lot of bowlers have been, been experiencing here, other than the footing issues and the approaches being slightly tacky due to inclement weather that happened before. Moving inside, manipulating whatever oil is out there. The outsides were, were cooked, dare I say cooked early. But the oil always held, holds in the middle. So if you're going to play a little wet to dry, a little wet to dry motion, get inside there, push that oil out, let your ball roll rather than trying to force it in. Exactly, exactly. As you can see, uh, He's not, um, South is not doing that bad. He's on, he's at least he's closing the frames. Julio is not doing bad at all. Welterweight action. Welterweight action, you know. This is where the true game is. Um, if you ever want to win a game and you feel like you're out and you don't spare no more, your game is completely done. You have to start sparing. You have to start, you know, going in. So this is the foregrounds. He's a great spare maker right now. This is why I feel he should be coming up a cruiserweight. I agree. You know, and I mentioned that with welterweight, you, you could see X's. You know you're going to have to see some slashes. And if they're having a bad day, you're going to see some dashes. And right now, Julio's trying to make a dash and trying to get a 2-1 advantage on the Southeastern welterweight champion. And you can see, like, what's going on. It's weird. I got We got the tribe members, right? And then all of a sudden, we have apocalypse members who are all in the same district. So you got the whole Van Ness link. We got, we got, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But basically, but we have, you know, being that Van Ness is closed, we all have moved over to speed the spins and so forth. So now it's weird because now the, his whole division is supporting him, you know, while we're here. You know, the tribe couldn't make it, most of the people couldn't make it, or some of the, you know, not here at the event. Wow, he's still coming up high. Stop babying it, he moves left, he'll kill it. And uh, I love that you pointed out the baby aspect. So he's moving in, but then there's that lack of trust that you can see in this. And it's starting to radiate through the body language of Kareem. And Kareem definitely has a good look. I, in my opinion, he has a great line. He has to play the line. You know, it's one thing about making the right move, but you know what we always say up north, throw it better. And he's going to have to throw it better, and that does not better his situation. That's a hard spare in general. I mean, that back then, you really have to go at it. You have to do what you got to do. And this is just another break for Sakari to just jump on and just take the win. Right now, it's a 1 1 um, category. Right now, it's yeah, currently 1 1, but looking like 2 1. Julio, Julio is not only just rolling the ball a lot better, he's feeling good. He's walking, he's talking, and he's feeling it. Yep. You know, you got Kryptonite over here supporting. She's a. Another uh, welterweight that was actually champion. And don't forget tag team as well. Tag team, oh, yeah. That's not, you know, you got some formidable bowlers here. You oh, know, yeah. any given day, they could go lights out on you. You know, that's I think that's the whole thing. So the fact that, you know, the South over here, I, I'm kind of shocked there's nobody from the South here. Like, I mean, except for the Reese's Pieces, well, they're DMV. I, 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 I always consider them so much South. And you know what? Oh, man. This game could be going South. Well, jump on it. depending on what Julio does right here, if he doubles up, the game is gone. You know, when I think about this, I think about talking, speaking of Harlem and Kareem being from Harlem, I think about a song from Cameron, Down, Out, Down, Down, 
That was Kaya production. Kaya yes, production. <laughs> wake up, Mr. West. Yep. And we right now we're saying, wake up, Mr. Muhammad, because he needs to. He has to. He must wake up if he's going to keep the pressure applied. It's getting him, or I don't know, it's just him getting himself. You know, once you get into your own mind, you're in trouble. But it's a simple adjustment that he needs to do to step left and throw the ball with confidence. That's all he needs to do. I don't know. Woo! Chop, baby, chop. Chop, baby, chop. I mean, there's a big difference between the carpet and the, and, and the wood approaches. And what we feel up here in terms of AC, right now, they're feeling different. They're feeling the heat because they're sending heat at each other. Oh, no, definitely. The heat, the heat is serious, you know. The, the stakes are kind of high. You know, you just, it's not just the bragging right. There's a, there's a financial risk as well here. Oh, yeah. So, you know, this is kind of like a mini caller. I don't know about this one, but he's, ooh, no. Okay, Julio feeling good. Julio, yeah, that's what it is. I don't think he does like the triple. <laughs> no, 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 no. allergic to triples. You know, my man got a little triple selling. He's a little allergic to it. You know what I'm saying? Not for nothing, Bolorama has hosted our, our Battle Bowl series five day event. I, like, I don't think people will know five days, five days of bowling, non stop bowling with continuous houses being packed and packed and packed. Let's get it together, guys. I agree. If you're in the bowling world, you need to be part of the UBA, uh, part of the growth, part of the, uh, part of the whole lifestyle, even if you don't, you know, okay, we are different, we're not, we're not the other companies, but I feel we're better than them. Even it's so much that the other companies come to us. Not for nothing. Um, we have another event in another house, which is full, the 220 and under. Uh, Shout out to Bolero Wilmington as well. Yeah, right. Oh, whoa. It worked. Taking a little walk on the wild side. So, you know what? Open this body up. You know what you said? Screw it. Sometimes you just got to let it fly. Yep, and he just did it. He did, I think he's listening to our cast. He got his headset on. <laughs> <laughs> that was an exit wounds like a frisbee. Oh, shout out to exit wounds advancing in the elite eight. Yes. Uh, so now we got the elite four. You know so, what? Exactly. I, I, and you know what? Jersey is primarily dominant in this division right now. You got exit wounds. You got uh, murder Inc. The only G Town from the south and outrage. And outrage. DMV. Woo! That was a huge double. He's trying to make a statement. Maybe the game may not. Like I said, down but not out. Sometimes you got to go back to your roots, and he went back to Harlem with that. Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> Selena Johnson was singing on that hook. Yep, facts. <laughs> he went to Harlem with that one. Selena Johnson. Oh, man, taking it to the rucker. And right now, he's trying to cross over the situation. He's trying to finish strong. Oh, no, we got a game. Julio's only up by 14 pins. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, going up about another 10, 20 if he strikes. <laughs> With another ball change. Yes. With another ball change. That has also been big. People have been going, they've been, people have really figuratively and literally been in their bag while being here going. Uh, Collins. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's the name of her jersey. I gotta say how much I love that name in my bag. Like, you don't understand. Missy Collins representing, um, yeah. uh, oh, uh, Bol Bolorama Express. Oh, Sil uh, Silverland Express. That was their own name. Oh. Uh, my, I want no problem. The house changed and gave him a new name, New Jersey. Same, same logo with a new name, basically. And that's it. Julio with a big double, so almost solidifying his win. He's saying, okay, if you're gonna, if you're gonna put pressure, I'm not the pipe they're gonna crush. No, no. Let me tell you something. That double made that that the South, the Southeastern champ threw the double, and I think that that double kind of woke him up. But hey, reminding him, hey, look, the fight is still going on. It definitely gave it to him. Definitely gave it to him. It definitely gave it to him. Like, I don't know. Um, Muhammad needs to really uh, put more pressure. He's going into the ninth, and if he finishes out the tenth out the door, that's a five banger. Oh no, that's a six banger. Oh, he's going out. Wait a minute. And it's coming. Oh. Now, I still, I still like that decision to play the whole lane. I, I, that's what I was talking about. He was went, he went left, and he's actually throwing it out. He got uh, a little bit overconfident and slowed it down a little bit, and he ended up with this uh, split that's not going to be made. So not con con not convert the six seven ten. No, it's not going to convert that at all. At Sorry, four seven ten. Yeah, four seven ten. But um, hey, I'm at your will. I, I'm just a ball, I throw my ball guy. I'm not a guy who's uh, you know who knows what pin stands up. <laughs> if it's not a strike, I'm, I'm not, you know. He, he just knows it was a mess that didn't get made. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, 
you know, this is amazing. And he went back to the baby and the bull. Uh, that that split lost his confidence. Um, he needs to get back on his confidence, but there's still there's still some games out there. There's still some game out there. Like I like to say, anytime I bowl league, a whole lot of game left. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's the best of seven. Uh, you're going into game. This is game three right now. I'm gonna say Julio's gonna win uh, because he doesn't even have to throw a ball. Basically, how you doing? My name is Rudy. Well, I can't curse, so what's up, babe? I love you, bro. Damn it, Bobby. You good? <laughs> so we're gonna go into the DMV. Kryptonite, one of my favorite singers. Kryptonite has an interesting history with Bobby. Nobody talks shit. More than his side. No, definitely. I will have him on my team anytime because if he's on my side, he's good. Most censored man, you get history. That is a because <laughs> he's always cursing. That's another thing, but I like it. <laughs> so as I said, Julio Hernandez actually won. He doesn't even have to throw the ball down. So basically, at that twenty, he's gonna put him up one sixty four to one sixty three. Damn, I did good, bro. That's the first math I really knew. <laughs> and Julio goes, well, you know, he went Brooklyn because we're in Delaware. That's the only reason why. But he went Jersey. We say, you know, we say Jersey. So, what do they, wait, what do they say in Texas? Yeehaw? I don't know. We're going to find out. Because we are, we, we, we are going to find out when we make our trip down there. Uh, are you going? No, I look forward to it. Oh, we love that. Um, shout out to Espy. He's already out there. I don't know if he's joining a team. I just got hit up. One of my friends is moving to Texas who's part of the UBA. And he's like, I'm going to join one of the UBA teams out there. So, ooh. I don't know, I don't know. Game's out. Game's out. I almost thought we had a little, a little um, visit from Mr. Malik. Oh. Josh Malik, that is. Josh Malik. Oh, God. Wait, he didn't move out there. Did he? No, no, no. I'm talking about on the lanes. We almost, that 8 10. Yeah, that would have been it. That's a, the pioneer. Yeah, the pioneer of that. Damn, you just showed out a triple OG. I'll be right back. I'm going to take a shot. I'll be right back. All right, there you go, man. <laughs> I got my nephew out there. What's <laughs> up? And he snipes it out. Walking and sniping. So now, well, speaking of sniping, right now it's getting as dark as a snipe because right now it's a Will Wesley situation for the Southeast. Welterweight champion, he needs to get in the game and out of his own head. He's looking for a surface change. He's looking for a ball change. He's changed lines, but right now he has to do one thing and one thing only, throw it better. If he does not throw it better, if you don't know better, you can't do better. And right now, he's going to keep sweating. He's going to, right now, he's dripping sweat, but he needs to just turn that perspiration into perseverance. And he needs to get through this situation. Right now, it is currently 2-1. Julio, Julio is up two games to one over Kareem. Kareem has got to get into the game. He is here for a reason, but he has to show that he's here for a, for a reason. It's one thing to show up, but he needs to show out, or else he's going to get thrown out and put out. He definitely has a good line. He's got a good look. He's got to stay in his shot. He's got to push all the way down the lane, and he's got to let that ball work. And that right there is the most confident release I have seen from a couple shots on lane one. Lane one has been the, 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 the predecessor. It has been the anchor on his legs in terms of keeping a consistent game. His 10-pin game has been good for the most part, and that is the first 10-pin blemish that I've seen, that I've, re that I've recognized and noticed from the Southeast Welterweight Champion. The one thing about missing a 10-pin in the beginning is that at least you have room to clear it up. It's all about now what happens with the Northeast Champions Ball and if that puts more wind in the sails or if it makes him a little too confident. Let's see if he's going to walk it out and let's see if he's going to clap it out. And no, we have an opportunity to either see uh, a, a sniper shoot a sharpshooter 
or let's see if he's going to shoot a blank on this one. We're going to see. As they say in the South, we finna see. Shout out to them Southeast bowlers watching. And he's still loaded up. Julio right now starting out with a clean frame. Kareem recollecting himself. The iron lung right now is trying to withstand the smoke being delivered by the Northeast welterweight champion right now. The welterweight is throwing some, some heavy hitter shots. And it is getting noisy in the background as you hear representatives of Apocalypse. This may be an audition for Apocalypse. I don't know, Rudy. Because not for nothing, I don't see a lot of Tribe jerseys over here. The fact is, I birthed Julio. You know, you must have childbearing hips because, you know, let you tell it, you've been birthing a lot. Oh, no, well, I'm a, I'm a UBAOG at the end of the day. At the end of the day, but the funny, fun story is that he didn't even know he was in the w, uh, his uh, welterweight championship. Mm. So I put him in, and I'm like, give me $10. <laughs> After that, he qualified and wins the belt. <laughs> Another fun fact is Latino All-Stars rejected him. Really? And I was like, wait. So I, I grabbed him up, and my team was at that time I was with Connecticut with the uh, Hounds of Wall. Shout out to Jason. Mm -hmm. um, and um, another fun fact was I put him in. He started winning the belt. He lost the belt. I brought him over to Trot. He hasn't lost yet. And I'm going to say he's going to win this in about six. Um, because I'm, I'm, I can't diss my man, Muhammad. Muhammad is a good, great, good, great, great guy. Good family guy. Um, oh, that was a great shot. That was a great shot. <laughs> that was a, also, definitely a great shot. I got to apologize to his wife because uh, he's, he's not on the picture of the flyer. So that was not my fault, but it was a rush job, and I'm very sorry. Uh, we are working on the marketing scheme so for everything here. So once again, that's not, I'm sorry. That's my family right there. Homefield. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, man. And Julio is certainly not sorry about that shot right there. Julio is definitely doing his thing, and he's letting it ring. Here it's going. Now I'm doing all right over here, calling some welterweight action. Yes, welterweight. Yes, straight. Up. Yeah. Huh? I said, hey guys, it's Belma. Uh huh. And what, and what you represent? Milford, Menace. That's Milford Menace. So, uh, how you loving your Battle Bowl experience? How's everything here at Battle Bowl 14? Oh, speaking of crossing bridges. <laughs> We did cross the bridge to get here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and he crossed the bridge to get that strike. Milford, Milford, Milford Menace? I believe that's Milford, Connecticut. Oh, Milford, Milford Delaware. Delaware. Yeah. Julio on a 290 pace. Method Man has to find some kind of method to get past this. He took a walk, recollected himself, and there he, there he put a little more power in that release. And, oh yes, very good. Negotiates the pocket, and then I'm loving it right now because he's getting a little mad. He's getting a little frustrated with himself, not necessarily with his opponent. Sometimes you gotta say F it and throw it. And he needs to just throw that ball. He got here, even though he would like to win the 500, you're really still playing with house money. You're not gonna lose anything except maybe a, maybe a couple of smiles. Other than that, you're still going to hold. You're still going to hold your title. Your title still remains. But you got to look at it as if you got nothing to lose. And right now, he's throwing the ball with a little more, little more muscle. But that over-under reaction that has been happening to a lot of bowlers over the weekend is happening over here. We are on the low side of Bowlerama in Newcastle. And both sides of the house have always played different. The high side has always been a little more kinder to bowlers than the low side in bowler rum. He, he goes for it all. Shout out to Wade, man. 
shout out to tickets, my man. Yo, you're my family. I love you, bro. Seriously, never, never a dull moment. And uh, yeah, we be on in Texas. He's watching. So. <laughs> Beloved in the building, beloved. Actually, yeah, he is a part of Team Beloved. Damn yeah, right. You know, the people say I hate Team Beloved. I don't. I just see better, and I, I think that, that that's the misconfusion. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a lot of my family. I may have some people that don't like me on it, just as anywhere you go. But I have a lot of my family and friends on it that I want to see strive, and I always I'm always up for competition. Hey, you know, everyone loves the underdog. Yeah. And speaking of underdogs coming out the Metro North, shout out to City Morgue, who I originally, yes, I originally called them to go to the, to, to all the way. I called them an exit in the finals. Unfortunately, they lost to one of the best teams in history by, by 40. No, it wasn't 40. I thought it was 70. It was 40. I've heard 40. I've heard 50. No, uh, I, I saw... Uh, I saw Deion Johnson, he told me 40, it was 40. I, I mean, that whole fact, I mean, dude, this is their second year in UBA, going to Elite Eight. Out of 300 plus teams, you're winning. That's still in, in, in its course, you're representing. Whether you're the underdog or not, you're winning. As Julio just on a five banger and killing, killing it, you know? And, and you know, it, he mentioned that he wasn't comfortable in game one. It took him a little time, a little soul searching, literally as his, as he changed his souls, putting his shoes. He made him find his home in a apocalypse. <laughs> so, are you releasing him? Uh, uh, well, we have a number one rule. We don't. If you want to leave, you can leave. Um, oh man, and he did not want to leave. That's that nasty split, six seven. Reminds me of Jib Lane. That's a great segue. Segue to that. <laughs> but yeah, he did not want to leave that. And it looks like uh, Julio already got in his head. Um, I think Julio's going to win this one easily, whether he goes 290 or not. As we talked about, he can strike, he can spare. So it's a matter of actually just doing everything he needs to do, you know? Well, me, me speaking as a former champion, not necessarily in this division, but in general, there are situations where <clears throat> I'm getting choked up right here. Pardon me. There are situations where you see things like this, and it looks like you can't come back, and then sometimes you gotta smack yourself a couple times, wake yourself up, and just say evidence, just say, you know what? I'm just throwing haymakers. He, he needs to throw haymakers from here on in. I don't care what fucking he throws. He can throw fucking bales of hay, cars, whatever. He's fucking done. Exit out. He's done. He's done. Yeah, he's done. He's gonna continue bullying this out right now. Bullying yeah, he has no. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's got it all. It is what it is. Um, and this is just my biased opinion from. Uh, watching uh oh my god <laughs> when you when your name's sicario and you get like fucking like you know bunny fucking hits like that with that fucking weak ass shit that he threw through yeah he done he done and there's been many there's been many opinions about the northeast welterweight champion saying that he is not who he is well he is he's still there for a year yeah, well, I, well i put it like this he actually took out uh, our our vixen champion for the longest run right now. You know who he hasn't beat? That is very true. Sleepy Asian, wherever she went. Yep. Where's the Sleepy Asian girl? She's 3-0. Oh, no, she's kind of lit right now. She's 3-0. She's 3-0. His three wife. We oh, were just talking about her. Yeah, yes. Yeah, shout out to the Reese's Pieces. They, hey, 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 hey. Just like candy, they're a package deal, but they're far from sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah, by, by the way, she is sweet. Very that sweet. was a great. That was fucking awesome. That's pretty really good. That's pretty good. I ain't gonna lie to you. And you know what? This victory's got to be oh so sweet. And right now he is packaging up a lot of strikes. And right now taking a trip to Candyland, and he is snacking on a potential five hundred dollar uh, addition to his account. Exactly. Unless. Can we say Ching Ching? Can we? we can say Ching Ching. <laughs> we can call him whatever we want, but. <laughs> the fat lady has not sung yet. Baby Jesus, where are you going? I will say this. The Southeastern welterweight champion, he is definitely down. He is in a hole. He is in a dark night, reminiscent of dark night hole. I'm going to go get some footage. He needs, he needs to climb out of this hole. And speaking of climbing out right now, I'm going to say signing out is Rudy Feliciano. Enjoy, guys. Uh, remember, it's UBA all day. Uh -huh. and I'll leave you with the great voice.
Oh, what is it? What is it? Wait, the, the voice, voice of choice. choice. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, my brother. I love to see you shine. And I mean, your team is funny, but you know what it is. There's a whole bunch of my family members. Uh -huh. And I just like to play the big dog against you guys. That's about it. Hey, you know what? Shout out to the Metro North. Yes. Oh, Respect us. I think, I think they should. We had three teams in the finals. Uh -huh. We, you know, we had Secret Society, um, Apocalypse at one time. And, um, and City Morgue. Mm -hmm. that, that says a lot. And City Morgue just made their debut in Elite Eight. Last year was us in Elite Eight. I think it's just continuing. You could see Class Axe. Yeah, you could see Class Axe. Class, oh, Class Axe. Let's not even forget those guys. Mm -hmm. But not for nothing, this this whole this whole U, our division might be going for the run of the hardest division in the UBA. Ooh, we, we gotta talk about that. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that and harp on that a little later on. All right. Right now, the focus is the focus is here on on champions right now, and the Northeastern welterweight champion is is making a run. Right now, he's up three one. Potential two fifty seven finish for the welterweight champion of the Northeast. Unfortunately, that is not the max for the Method Man, and he's got to find some kind of method. Right now, the smoke that is being delivered from Julio, it is taking the iron out of the lungs, of the iron lung, and he needs to research his own self, research his own soul. Right now, he's, he's, in, he's gotta be asking himself, what do I have to do to get myself back in this? Sometimes you gotta have a no tap mentality and just attack that pocket. So maybe at this point, he's gotta just aim for the head, do a little head hunting and just search. But every single shot has gotta count and he's gotta, he's gonna have to carry more and throw it better and hope that maybe a couple of hiccups come in the game of the Northeastern welterweight champion. And if that does happen, shout out to Sean Hanley, Shiz, we could see a classic walk down happen if he does search himself and rise up. Because if he does not rise up, it can indeed be a dark night for Kareem. I think Mr. Kareem Mohammed, I think, has got some issues here. And, and the bigger one is that not only it's a combination of he's not able to find anything, and more importantly, El Sicario has been able to find a whole bunch of something. Mohammed right now leaving the seven pin. And uh, yeah, there's trouble. There's trouble all the way over for Mr. Mohammed. And I will uh, channel the current Northeast heavyweight champion, Jonathan Dansbury, and myself, because one of my own phrases is the margin of error is zero. And Mr. Dansbury's phrase is El Chipo, and I say that because there's three matches left potentially, or three games left in this match potentially, and Kareem Muhammad needs to win all three of them, or if not, El Sicario will be picking up a nice paycheck bounty to go along with his machine gun spare shooting style. Yeah, oh, you're here? Oh, right, let's, let's hear you on the mic here. I'm here for the bounty. They said, hey, 500 to the winner. Listen, send me location. All uh, right, right now, if it's down in five games, bounty is the quicker picker-upper. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's gonna have to quickly pick it up. Shout out to Bounty Hunters. <laughs> wow, at the end of game four, El Sicario 245, AK Muhammad 158. El Sicario is up three games to one. And again, it's a best of seven, so, so four games, that's it. Yes, sir. So right now we got a little bit of a bit of a break here. We have we have got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Meanwhile, I'm going around here. I still have Apocalypse. Let's go over here and chat here with the member of Apocalypse because I want to know how El Solcario is doing in his audition process to possibly join a, a Apocalypse. Oh, we've been so, well, wait, wait. Who, what's your name first? I got to introduce you. Oh, I'm Chris. Chris from Apocalypse. From Apocalypse, yeah. How's he doing so far? He's perfect. I mean, you know, I see red and black on him right now. He's, he's looking like a potential apocalypse member. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He can shift over to us anytime. 
Now, he did shoot a 245 last game. Is that good enough for Scratch Pair? Our Scratch Pair? Probably first handicap. First handicap pair? What do you think? First handicap pair, Elsa Carrier? Julio? Yeah, Julio. Uh, first handicap for sure, yeah. definitely. 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 Lead off, second guy, anchor. Oh, let's see him be lead off. Lead off, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because definitely. he gets the team started. He the team started, he lights everybody up. He's got the machine gun and peasants here. Now I've got Rudy over here. Now now you two are part of the same team, and they're talking about picking him up on Apocalypse. What, what's your thoughts on this matter? I mean, it will be a hit to us, but if he wants to leave, he's more than able to. We, and um, our team has not uh, ever been, if you if you don't want to stay, you have to stay with us. We don't, we've never been like that. We could 90 day him though, just given. We can 90 day him, but um, we never been the type to. If you don't want to be with us, you don't have to bowl with us. He's a, I don't. I don't see the tribe being that sort of team. He's a no. Team player, though. Come on, he's yeah, he's a great team player. He travels. I have no no. I have no malice or wor bad words in that sense with them. I just feel like you know uh, it could have been better. You know, I maybe my 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 objective of how I uh, cheer people on is a little bit harsh for a lot of people. Because I've been telling him he needs to go for a cruiserweight now. Nobody's beating him in the welterweight. Nobody's beating him. Um, if pushing you to be better a bowler and look for better competition is harsh, then I, I'm probably your guy, you know? <laughs> All right, so right now, thank, thank you so much for that. Let's go back to the matchup. Right now, both bowlers trading match at spare. So Kara with the seven spare, Meth with an eight spare. Again, this is game five, so Cario's up three to one. If he takes this game, it is over. And Sicario will win North versus South with the welterweights. We know the North is going to win regardless. Ooh, Harsh Talk over here. Let's chat. What do we got? Hey, so I'm just sitting here chatting with the current world champion, Charles Withers. And watching these two champions, what, what, what would your advice be to the current Southeast welterweight champion who seems like he's, you know, he's going through a slight struggle right now? Well, see, that pitch right there is pretty good. And it's like I just walked down and talked to him. I said, hey, with bowling, you just got to, it's you versus the lane for yourself. As long as you do what you do and strike, hit your spot, take your time, get your timing right, do what you need to do to strike, and then let your opponent do what he do, and it's going to be a good game. If something falls apart, something falls apart. But as long as you do what you do, you're good to go. That's all it is in bowling. You, you can't control what your opponent does. You can control what you can do. That's all you have to do. And it looks like he's gaining control of a situation because, like we said, it could always be a paradigm shift, and it all depends on what the lanes decide because you can roll the ball. But at the end of the day, Everybody. If, the, <laughs> if the pins do not fall and it creates a situation, you got to take advantage of it. you got to take advantage of it. It's like I tell everybody, too, when you come to this World Series and all the bell matches mm -hmm. and even tournaments all around the world, I tell everybody, I try to preach everybody, Striking does a lot, but if you can't spare in this game of bowling, you're not going to win. And I'm really, you feel frames. You feel frames. That's all bowling is about, feeling frames. Really glad you mentioned that. And I always call this, you know, the division of essence, you know, because essentially bowling is all about filling up the boxes, making the spares. Before we all struck, you know, we didn't all just pick up a ball and just start throwing strikes. We were at this stage right here. Yeah. Yes, and it's like I say, just watching, just watching my man shot right here, the North Chap. And mm -hmm. like I said, I don't know him personally, but you see, he he kind of missed it, even though it was a slight split, but he mm -hmm. missed that spare. In the end, if he loses game by like seven or eight pins, it's gonna come back to that frame that he didn't cover. That's why I tell everybody, just make sure you fill your frames and just go from that. But I, like I told my man Kareem, I say, hey, relax, just do you, make your shot, post your shot, and let the bowling come to you. That's all about bowling. You gotta let the game come to you. Sometimes you can't chase the game. Can't chase the game. Let it come to you. That's right. I love it. I love bowling. You know, and, and, we, and we appreciate you watching this match and really checking this match out. Cause you know, some of us forget. Before some of us were 230, we were wishing for 30 clean frames. So, you know, if you got your nose up, you might want to sit down and remember where you come from. This is where you came. Getting it from the mud, getting it from the ground up. And this is not ground being bottom tier. This is the foundation where it was laid. And before you lay a house down, make sure that floor looks good. That's absolutely correct. It's all about the flooring and the foundation. You got to start from the bottom, like you said, and everything builds up from there. That's how you, you make your house. Exactly. Indeed, from the floor up. And let's see if the pocket gets tore up and no. But you know what? That went from really, really bad to makeable. Because if it was a 2-8-10, 
then that would be a very hard situation to get out of. Yes, and, and, and also on this shot, like I said, even about filling frames, we see, you look at the score right now, he's technically still up even because the man split in the second frame. Mm -hmm. So at this point, what I would do, I would try to go for it, but when you go for it, at least make sure you at least get one because the pin count's going to make a difference. Exactly. You don't want to play too much hero ball. Yes, and okay, so it was a good shot at it, but he got one, so pin count's mm -hmm. good. Very yes. good. So, yeah, so see, like, see, if the man, if the North champ goes up there and spares again, uh -huh. he's still up right now by two pins. See, it's all about the pin count. Yeah. Indeed. They always say, you know, um, strikes are a beautiful home, but you can't pay the rent unless you make them spares. spares. That's absolutely correct. Spares win, spares win tournament. It's like football. You have a great offense. If your defense ain't good, you ain't going to win. Ain't no point in having a check if you ain't got a pen to sign it. That's correct. That is correct. <laughs> yeah, ain't no point in having a check if you ain't got no pen. That's right. And let's see if he can write a check, and let's see if he can cash in. And, oh, man, it crashes in, but it didn't crash out. And right now we have what I call the Richard Nixon with the two peace signs up on each side. <laughs> he called it the Richard Nixon. That's the first time I heard it. I like that. That's the first time I heard it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that is a great, <laughs> that is a great word for the big four now. Very because good. it's always been those big four. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's what I love about bowling. So, hey. Yeah, he, but same thing. It's hard spare, mm -hmm. hard split conversion, but you gotta at least get two because you never know what happens at the end. At least get two. Very good. All right, so that's two open frames back to back for the welterweight champion. I feel, in my opinion, he needs to step back, take a breath, and I think he indeed is going to take said breath. He may be getting a little, a little ahead of himself and he may be trying to force the issue, and he may not need to force the issue. But let's say, let's see if um, there's issues for the Northeastern champion. Let's go! And he gets a cartwheel kick and takes out the 10 pin. The 10 pin was almost, was almost there, but you know what? Just like that, he kicks it out. We have yet to see a slap out, and that's due to the fact that, well, the Southeast champion is still here. He does not want to lay down. He does not want to give anything for free. Nothing is coming for free. Every shot is earned. Every frame is earned. And let's see if he can earn a triple. And again, a lot of triple ceiling in his veins. He has been allergic to triples. Well, sans the last game where he got about two triples back to back. Speaking of back to back, shout out to everybody who was here back and back and back for all three days of Battle Bowl action here at Battle Bowl 14. And shout out to all those, whether you're in the North or the South, for embracing the culture. Let's see if he can embrace that 10 pin. He does embrace that 10 pin. And you know what? 10 pins, 10 pins back. Either way, nine plus one is 10. Strikes and spares will get you there. And speaking of getting there, we're looking forward to getting there and getting on the screens and on the lanes for the World Championship matchup that will be taking place with Nick Christie and Charles Withers. We'll be looking forward to seeing what has gone from the Elite Eight to the Elite Four in Outrage, G-Town Heavy Hitters, Exit Wounds, and of course, Murder, Inc. Those are the four involved in it. Shout out to Outrage for winning their brawl. And right now, well, a merciful nine count but he is brawling within himself, and that being the Southeastern welterweight champion, if he does not get out of his own head, it is a foregone conclusion that this is over. But like I said, one-on-ones can turn to two-on-ones because your worst opponent can be your own self in these situations. Similar to game one, down, not out. But he needs to go out and show out. He has to let it all go. Anything that may be holding you down, any knots in your stomach, you better be a Boy Scout and learn how to untie those knots. Because if you do not, then you cannot win. And right there, threw that ball with some conviction, threw it just like he wanted it. And I know he wants it. If he didn't want it, he wouldn't be here. Shoot your shot. <laughs> Sicario right now, shooting his shot. Let's see if he's got something in his shot and has a little meeting with the pocket, negotiates it. 
and the situation is great. Do the voodoo that you do, brother. Go ahead. Right now, Julio's feeling good, and why would he not? He's up three games to one. Of jerseys coming around with raffles. The girls are selling it for them. Three for five, eight for ten. 20 for 20. The girls are coming around selling the raffles for the many styles of jerk. So Kara's coming in looking for the double. He gets it. Got yelling from Silcario. Silcario, uh, using another mafioso term, is smelling blood in the water. Yeah, Sean Knight is not the only person that can do bad puns. I can do bad puns just as badly. People like my puns today. Ha! <laughs> And 4-7 up there, and, and it's, we're running out of frames here in the seventh game, and keep in mind again, Kareem has got to win this game. It is game, set, match, over. And Adrian's got a very look, look of great concern on her face. She's still smiling, but part of that smile is, oh no. Looks like he'll make the spare, he will. However, he's got to pick up at least 30 pins in the next three frames. Coming up there, and we have 6-10. And again, he's, he's running out of frames, and more importantly, he's not throwing strikes. It's at that point. Turning point of the match could have been game three. He had a chance to win. Game two, he had a chance to win. Game one, obviously, he won. He's had his chances in this, but unfortunately for him, Silcario has figured it out. And again, he took a little bit too long in this game to figure it out. Opens in the third and fourth frame. That's going to be a problem. And there's another one here in the eighth. So right now, he's got a 123 in the eighth. The best he can do is a 183. And right now, El Sicario can hit that in the eighth frame. If he's two more strikes, we'll put him with the 185. And it will be over. Basically, Kareem needs a bunch. And I mean a bunch of opens. Maybe all three of them. He cannot afford Silcario throwing another strike. So this could be game over right here. Here's a shot right here. This can end it if he strikes and, oh, didn't strike, two, four, five. So you're saying there's a chance. Silcario's still happy and there's good reason for it. Right now, looking at the numbers, 142, one, if he makes a spare, it'll be around a 162, again, if Kareem goes out, it's a 183. So if he makes a spare, he only needs one more spare. So basically, he can afford an open somewhere along the line. He can make it up. He can make that up with a double. He's going for the spare right now. Looks like he'll make it. He does. Right now, 62 in the eighth, potentially. Nine frame coming up. Oh, that is exactly what Kareem was looking for. And he found it. Yeah, it's, that is the Nixon. That was coined by UBA Northeast champion, once upon a time, Alex Prell. And the Nixon being the big four, if you've ever seen Nixon do that victory sign, that's where it is and that's where it came from. Now this becomes a little bit more interesting. Now we know he's not making the spare. Let's not even front there, he doesn't. So he's got a 166. If Kareem goes out the door, that is a 183. That means that Sicario needs a mark. And that can make things a little bit interesting, however, if he doesn't strike out, and if he doesn't do that, the, lead, the best that he can do is a 173, which means that Sokari does not need another mark, and if he shoots another big four like that, then we'll have a, uh, yeah, then we'll have a tie. Actually, no, we won't. He'll win. Because he'll have 164. Hey, good job, man. 
sorry, 174. Better job now. Here's the shot. This must be a strike when the match is over. And it is a strike. Well, now things got a little bit interesting. Now we move on to the 10th. Again, same situation here. First ball that comes out of his hands has got to be a strike. If it's not, the best he can do is a 163. He's mathematically shut out that it's game set and match. You know, one of the things, one of my favorite movies of all time is a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. And one of my favorite phrases out of that movie is a funny thing happened on the pit way to the pay window. El Sicario, I'm sure in the seventh frame, especially when he saw the open in the eighth, is going to the bank to cash his check. And he still may here, but this has got to be a strike. It is not. That is game. That is match. We are done. El Sicario. Julio Hernandez will win at North versus South for the welterweights. And he is your Battle Bowl welterweight champion. You We're right now again. The best that he can do is a 163. One so Carrier's already got a 166. And he's going to finish out somewhere in the 160s. Right now, 160. And actually, no, he won't. He'll finish in the 150s. 159. Good, as I said, so Caro's already got a 166. So this is just uh, window decoration at this point. Just a table dressing. Uh, I know that Kareem put up a valiant effort. He's going to be looking at some of these opens and going, eh, I wish I could have some of those shots back. Especially that eighth frame at double. And all of a sudden, he could have snuck a Snuck away with this one, forced to game six. However, great effort by Kareem. This was fun. This was fun. We had a lot of fun with the crowd here also. It's great about the UBA. There it is. I, I want to say he's just showing off, but I would just say it's an exclamation point on the win. He's doing doing that. I'm sure Kareem's going to ask, where was that earlier to 10? But it does not matter. And he's got the belt. The belt was not in doubt, but the North predominance is. And I'm going to have Sean Dyke do this interview. So I'm standing here right now, uh, the winner, 4-1 uh, victory over the Southeastern welterweight champion, Julio. It took a while to load that rifle up, man. You wasn't sniping much except yourself and your own foot. And then, and then you did literally did some soul searching after getting over those, those footing issues that you were getting, you changed some souls, and then, and then you started finding that soul, and you showed a lot of soul, you know, a little, little ally James Brown out here. So you show a lot of soul. I got soul. Well, I'm super bad. Yes, it is. Tell me, listen, it's, it's, it's soul. It's, it's the heart, heart of a champion. Uh -huh. You know, I wasn't supposed to be here. I'm the guy that everybody was supposed to beat. Everybody looked and said, him? I can beat that guy. Let me go on the list. And guess what? I had this belt since October. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going away with it. You know what? You definitely, you definitely still represent the tribe. And as, as a man representing the tribe, your quest for greatness is definitely coming into fruition. And you are reigning as one of the greatest champions in the entire division. 
I'm not just talking about North. I'm talking about all around. I stand by that, and I guarantee that. That's high praise, man. Let me tell you something. First and foremost, uh -huh. um, I want to dedicate this performance to my late cousin. Um, he passed away last week. We buried him on Wednesday. You know, you start thinking about do you really want to come down here or not. So, you know, uh, that's that, that one there is for my cousin David. It didn't look easy, but, you know, you got to come out here and, you know, maybe Bowling with purpose today, at least, you know, even though we struggled, but you bowl with a purpose, you grind it out, and, and you know, that's for him. So, I hope he's proud of me, man. Sure. I, I'm pretty sure, you know, that he definitely is. I'm sure he's looking down and smiling, and especially on a Saturday, kicking the feet back. Oh, yeah. Listen, you know? I want to know now, you know, uh, you said you wanted to see the rubber match, but, you know, this, this, this one might be it for me. This one might be it. Where's the other? Let me see this. UBA bowling, I'm coming around with the ball of choice raffle, one for five, three for ten, and eight for Can you call me double champ? Ball Does it count? I mean, if you walk around with two belts, should we throw the ones up and acknowledge Listen, you? I want to propose something now to UBA, right? Uh, Listen, you see, these, you see these belts here? Uh -huh. These things look amazing, uh -huh. but they all say Southeast. They all say Southeast. Let, let. Let's get some of these for the Northeast so that, so that I can grandfather this one out because I want this one to come home with me and stay with me forever. I'll tell you what. Grandfather it out. You know what? Come, come, come on back. Come on, come on, come on. Hold, hold on. No, no. Hold that belt back up again. Hold, hold them up. Hold them both up high. That's fucking hard. Huh. Let's, let's look this way with it. I, I want to look, look this way grandfather with it. Grandfather it out. Hold them up. That's hard, bro. My arm don't go that Now, this could be a look in the future, and we could be inspiring everyone in the front of the division, but we also could be inspiring the current Southeast welterweight champion to rise up, you know, take some egg yolks, you know, run up some steps, come on back. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that gym membership is going to be real now. <laughs> We get belts like that, you might see me step back in the division, right, but you know what? I digress. Whatever's gonna, whatever's gonna draw everybody in, you know? I try to do the best I can to get people into the welterweight division, and it was just by being champion and go, he's a bum, he's ass. And you definitely turn the division upside down. Speaking of which, your belt is upside down. But Listen, we're all over the place right now. It's been a long day, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it you is. Know, you know, it's a little warm. And you know what? I'm glad it's finally warm because before I was buying room temperature juices and it was staying oh so cold. But speaking of oh so cold, I, this division may go cold if you do what I believe you're going to do, and that is take the next step up. This clearly, you know, it, it's the reason why I want to take this one with me forever because no one took it from me. Uh -huh. But this is my last match here. I'll say that now. This is my last match. I'm always up for the challenge, you know, and congratulations to Kareem because he's a great champion. That's number one. But, you know, I'm about the challenge. I don't mind the travel. I do this. It's not for the money. It's for love of the game, you know. That, that's cliche, but it's for the love of the game. I'm going to go up into that cruiserweight division, you know, and, and, and I want to test the waters. I want to see where I stand, you know, and I want to see if I can hold that belt and talk to you again. So, yeah, hey. you know, that's the goal. I know, I, I think Malachi's around and maybe bowling later on, right? That's your current champ. So shout out Malachi because Malachi Moore is a beast. Mm -hmm. But, uh -huh. but, what it is, what it is. Cruiserweight division is going to have a Sicario in their midst. Mm -hmm. We might be looking to snipe them out one by one and make our way up there. Trust me. And how sweet would it be if, you know, not discounting my team, beloved, but if the tribe can rise again to prominence in not only the Metro North Division, but all around get back to one of those teams that were, were looked at and feared and, you know, it set like the little, the little shake and the shiver. And not only you winning a cruiserweight title, but them just getting overall getting a championship here at Battle Bowl. I'll tell you one thing, when, I, when we were here last year, when we were in the Elite Eight, it definitely showed that, you know, we were still where we were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Tribe is still one of the best teams in the UBA. 
And, you know, after taking that, that tough loss to Royal Flush, you know, they went back, they started to regroup, and, and, and they're putting those pieces together in place. So I don't think we're far away from being back to that prominence. I don't think it's a rebuilding phase. I think it's a reloading phase. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Metro North Division is going to have to look out. You know, you got the big time teams. You got Class X up there and, and Apocalypse is another team. David, shout out to these guys from Apocalypse, you know, mm -hmm. for, for supporting me. And hey, y'all are still family because y'all 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 were birthed in Van Ness in the Bronx. Cloth, yeah, they're from the Van Ness Cloth. So definitely shout out to, uh, shout out Sean and Alex and Clay. And, and Anthony there and Chris, you know, I didn't have really anybody here, so they were like, yeah, hey, we're going to come down and support you because it's you. And like I said, I always said it before, we do it for the five or six fans that we have, you know. So to the five or six fans and hopefully those watching me on YouTube. Wait, as Mick Foley used to say, more. for the dozens. For the dozens. I, don't even, I can't dozens. even say dozens. It's half, for the half dozens and half dozens of fans around YouTube in the UBA. You know, indeed. So thank you guys for that support, man. For no, real. No, we definitely appreciate you. You know, they've embraced you. You and everybody else watching at home have embraced the culture. And for those who have been embracing the culture since 2009, we are here 14, and then the movement is still mean. Listen, next year, next year, tribe, baby, tribe. Mm. Next year, tribe, I'm not coming down here alone. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna say that. I'm bringing the tribe with me. Oh, really? We're gonna be back in this Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. You'll see us back here in August. All right, I'll all right. say that here now. All right, so all green, nothing in between. Absolutely, that's right. how it works. So you already know what it is, man. Well, to wait. UBA all day. Listen, shout out Dino's Pro Shop. That's number one. Got to mm -hmm. shout out TK's Pro Shop. That's not the half of that, but I have it somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, love all. I love all six of you guys. The half dozen, the half dozen fans. So keep it going. Malachi Moore, good luck to you guys. Good luck to everybody representing the North, all right, in the rest of those WCS matches, man. UBA all day, baby. UBA all damn day.